Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marian Chapman and you've clicked on this thumbnail for a couple of reasons. Possibly because you're interested in painting rocks or you're interested in painting pebbles. You might have been drawn to the colours in the thumbnail, particularly the fact that they're deep, which is harder to do in watercolour, or it might have been the texture on the pebbles that drew you into thinking, oh, I wonder whether or not this exercise might be a good one. It's the sort of exercise that you can skip through bits if you want to. It's quite a long video, and that's because I am sharing everything, everything about the process involved in creating this painting about pebbles. It's got quite a few layers, so it involves a color explanation near the beginning. It involves um, a lovely cool wet and wet background, and I do that first so that you can set that aside and let that dry while you start to think about your composition and then I take you through how to think about your composition how to take a photograph how to work from it and how to place your objects to create an interesting focal point things like that I really enjoy sharing all my techniques and tips with you and I really share everything there is to know about how to put a painting together in this video Sometimes you might have clicked on it because you're just curious and you're in the mood for something relaxing and calm to watch and you've picked the right one because I'm going to just chat to you as I share my thoughts as I go through all the different phases of this painting. So it's in broken up into uh, quite a few sections. Uh, as I mentioned, I start off with um, the colors, I put them out and then I paint a lovely wet in wet background. Uh, it involves spraying, it involves wet in wet, it involves splattering the color in. Uh, later on, it involves splattering some masking fluid as well. And I take you through the process for the wet in wet background. I'm gonna start you off with that and just leave you with that section uh, in a moment. I then go into the composition and I really spend some time on that because it really is a key element to getting things right but you can skip over that if you design intuitively just go to the next section where I begin to paint the pebbles it's really easy just to hover your mouse along the different sections of the video till you get to the bits that you love I'm going to start you off here with something that I love to do the most and that is some splattering wet into wet thanks guys thanks for watching then come in with this beautiful Viridian, Viridian, Viridian. And then do the same thing, make it flow around. Water to make it move, and I'm just going backwards and forwards and making the paint flow all around. I've got big blue dotty bits here, so I might um, put some green on it over here. Just enjoying watching the paint move. It's a little bit dark there, so I'm going to tip it up this way and spray. Still just enjoying allowing the paint to move. I'm just turning it up. From side to side, angle to angle. While I um right, so there's dark bits, dark bits, dark bits, and it's light in the center. And I'd like a bit more tone in the center, so I'm gonna add bits with my brush, and same with the ultramarine. Add some bits and again make it flow. Don't know if I need more water. I'll just wait and see. And in a moment, I'm going to start to mop any excess, but for now, I'm allowing all that water to just remain on my page so that I can move the paint around. Yeah, okay, now it's starting to 
milled and I'm getting a beautiful underpainting, big drips down the bottom. So I'll just put them back on the page, tipping it every which way. And right, and now it's time to start to mop. I'm gonna get some tissues. And I'm gonna tip it on the side and start to mop it up. Oh, it's totally gotten under the tape, I can see it. I didn't um, run my finger over the tape enough. It's released, it's not sticking. And the moist, all the moisture's gotten under my um, tape on one side. Doesn't matter. Um, I do like the tape because um, it provides me with an edge. But if I don't get an edge, it doesn't matter. Because if you end up framing it, then um, the mat board can sit on top of the um, painting and create an, an edge. Just, just mocking and watching it. Right, I'm going to set this aside while I work on my um, thumbnail. And I'm going to put it on a strong angle so that I'll just sit here mopping for another minute. I'm going to put it on a strong angle so that any excess runs off. Alternatively, what I could do if I want it to remain on the page is dry it off like this. So maybe I'll do that because I really love what I've got there. Okay, I'm going to dry it. Holbein's Viridian, really beautiful green and um, it granulates so beautifully into all the little pockets on the um, paper of that I'm painting on. Um, the paper is Baohong, B-A-O-H-O-N-G, Baohong um, watercolour paper. It's cotton and very beautiful. Uh, the blue that I'm painting with is um, Schminky and it's French ultramarine, ultramarine, and that's the underpainting. So now it's drying. And the second step, while that's um, drying, I actually just dried it a lot with a hairdryer, but um, it's uh, taken quite a while, so I'm just letting it um, dry a little further, just air drying sitting there. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is work on our design. Are we going to um, copy this exactly? Um, what colours are we going to include in the whole design? And I want to include some red or pink. This pebble here is um, quite pink and so pretty. I really, really um, want to include some of it. So the underpainting was green and blue, and then I'm going to be adding in later on some carmine. The next thing we need to establish is the thumbnail. We need to think about our um, design. Um, for example, if I'm going for a, por um, <laughs> not portrait, landscape orientation so it's about those dimensions and then um, I like this idea of this pink rock being included and then there's this beautiful big rock up here and I'm just putting in some of those beautiful big shapes and then there's another one that comes in here and there's a space and that comes down there. This rock actually has beautiful stripes in it. Um, there's clearly different types of um, rock within this uh, beautiful pebble. I'll put in lots of little ones, but no need to draw them in for now. Uh, there's a beauty over here. Uh, there'll be a series of small-ish pebbles that lead over to this one there. There's one sitting on top up here and it's just inside 
frame but goes off um, a little bit there and there. And this one sits on top of another one that's really huge. But the way I'm going to paint it is to keep them separate. And if I want to um, add in pebbles that appear on top of other pebbles, I'll include that later. So there's quite a large one that, that's, yeah, scrub that. I'm going to put it in now. There's a big one that's under it. I'll see how I go if I include it now. And then there's other, lots of them are actually bumping up against one another. Lots of them, lots of them are laid one over the other. They're so beautiful in shape and the colours all vary beautifully. Well, there's just lots. And then there's a large-ish one here that comes up and sort of sits over that one a bit. And then what I'm intending is that this will be quite dark. There'll be small ones in amongst the dark. But this will be much darker than the rest. I'm just going to make it darker again. Right, and this way I can have a little look at it and go, oh, do I like this design? And I'm quite happy with how this one is um, drawing focus by having dark either side of it. So I think that's what I'll do um, design-wise is that one. So that's my thumbnail. So what I'm going to do next is um, draw it onto my paper touch it it's still quite damp now if i were to draw on that um the pencil will really indent into the page so i need to let that dry even further um, i'm just going to see if i can make this stick down the um, bottom edge has come away the water has gotten under the um, tape and is stopping it from sticking. So I'm just going to run my fingernails on it. See if I can get contact back. See, I didn't press it down well enough um, at the beginning. Hopefully it's made good contact with the paper. We'll see what happens. But it's still too damp for me to uh, draw on. So what I'm going to do is dry it again. Burnt Sienna. This is Holbein's Burnt Sienna. So I'll add that to the um, list of colours. Uh, so um, colour-wise, just talk about the colours that I'm going to be using. Uh, if yellow's there, blue's there and red's there. Yellow, blue, red. Burnt Sienna is a, a mixture and it's about there. And Ultramarine, put a big UM for Ultramarine. I'll just zoom in on that. So Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna are um, opposites each other. So if you draw a line through the center of the color wheel, um, any color that is opposite is its complement and you get a version of a complementary grey and that's what I'm going to be mixing up with ultramarine and burnt sienna. So I'm going to use the same ultramarine that was on the underpainting and um, make up a beautiful grey for th those rocks but I want to include a red and the red that I'm going to be including is alizarin carmine. I've got lots of it, so that's partly why I'm including it. So here's my um, burnt sienna. It's a Holbein 
burnt sienna and it gran gran granulates. <laughs> Having trouble getting that word out there, granulates, which means it makes that beautiful texture on your page. And then that's my um, burnt sienna, and then I've got alizarin and carmine. So I inherited all these tubes of um, alizarin and carmine. Oh, not that one. Alizarin carmine. I'm just looking for which this is brown matter alizarin from my father in law. He made, um, here we go. This is a Windsor Newton alizarin carmine. He made violins and he was playing with varnishes, and I assume that that's why he had all these beautiful colors. So I've got some alizarin carmine. And I'm going to need more of my ultramarine. So I might just, oh, that lid is quite stiff. Squeeze out a little more ultramarine there. Can't have too much ultramarine. I've got plenty of viridian. So then I've got burnt sienna, ultramarine, viridian and alizarin carmine so these two are opposite each other and these two are opposite each other so viridian sits just there on the color wheel red and green are opposite each other burnt sienna and ultramarine are opposite each other that's my plan uh, at the moment for um what i would i hope will be uh, the colors that I use. I will probably need, actually, I'm going to add an extra one to that, and it's called Raw Sienna. Uh, so I'm gonna use a Daniel Smith because I don't have the um, Holbein version of that. So Raw Sienna is, put RS there, Raw Sienna is a more yellow version of burnt sienna and that way i can um put in some of these warm yellows that appear there so that's my plan there are my colors i've got my design so i'm gonna check my painting again is it dry enough and because it's so step four will be to draw the design onto the paper and step five will be splatter with masking fluid. And I'm gonna be using a toothbrush for that. And splatter it all over the painting so that I get some lovely textures. Okay, here's the image that I'm working from. And my background, my underpainting has completely dried with uh, the Viridian and Ultramarine. And now I'm ready to sketch up my design. And I've got um, my thumbnail prepared of which elements I'm going to be putting in the painting. And so I'm pretty much going to follow my thumbnail, but also refer to the image as well for um, inspiration i'll sketch it up and then i'll show you the end result but you can see on the thumbnail here pretty much what it's going to look like i'll just section here I'm going to put the little pink one
I'm pretty happy with my design. What I'm going to do now is splatter the um, uh, the rocks with some masking fluid. I'm going to avoid splattering the uh, design parts in between because they're going to end up dark. So I don't really want masking fluid on them. So I'm going to get some pieces of paper and protect areas uh, there and protect around that rock there and maybe protect in like that just get some more up there like that maybe i'll get some of this area here and um, I'd like this to end up quite dark in there so I'll get some more bits of paper there. okay that's enough protection I'm using Holbein's masking fluid so it's a removable masking fluid it's got a little bit of pigment so you give it a little shake and I'm just using a piece of paper you could put it in a container and an old toothbrush so I'm just going to pour some onto um, the paper I'm going to turn that one over there that'll be all the masking fluid that I'll need and then I'm going to dab lightly and just flick it around it's hard to see because uh, it's blue on blue green but um, little tiny bits of masking fluid are little tiny dots it's just such a good way to do it to get little tiny flecks If I end up putting too much on, it's really quite easy to um, cover. A few more on this little one there and this big one, just a bit more. And that masking fluid is preserving all the little bits of um, green and blue that are on the existing pebbles. Um, it's starting to dry on my finger there. It's very easy to remove you could just peel it off i'm going to get a tissue that's going to get it off really quickly and i'm going to wash this old um toothbrush it's got up, like bits of um masking fluid uh, on it so i need to wash that so I can reuse it off my bits of masking my, <laughs> my stencils and, and it's really hard to see even for me uh, where it is. I wonder if I move that up to the camera, if, put it on an angle if you can see some of the masking fluid. No, not really. Anyway, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll start to come in with the uh, next layers. Right, if you are still watching this video, that is awesome. It means that you are a really a true lover of watercolour and that you'd like to um, see how the next steps go with my painting of the river bed.
<laughs> actually it was the shore of the river. I stood there and looked down, standing on the shore of the Murray River, and I looked down and took this photo of, of the rocks. Um, and it's got this pretty pink one, which I'm so keen to paint in this position. I've got the masking fluid on, it's lovely and it's dry. I've done my underpainting of the um, blue and green. It was uh, phthalo blue and viridian green. And I'm so excited to get start to painting on the rocks themselves. And in fact, I'm going to start with um, I might start with one over here and <clears throat> in the image it's got a lot of blue in it but I'm going to make up this beautiful green um, grey blue and I want to put in some um, earthy colours uh, underneath. Okay, it. I just went and got my um, thumbnail to remind me about my lights and darks and also that I had decided to include uh, raw sienna for all the um, warm-ish yellows that are in the rocks. Lots of them have, the, these rocks have a warmish yellow and then this cool um, blue gray as well. So I want to try and uh, make that happen with these rocks. And um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is start over on this side um, I often like to start on the part, side of the painting that's less important. This is the very important section and I want to start painting over here. So I'm going to need some raw sienna and some burnt sienna. So I've got some colour on my palette here. Just going to grab my brush and have a little look. It is... It's, um, I bought it to act as a raw sienna, but it's actually a Daniel Smith color called transparent oxide, I think. Um, transparent yellow oxide, yeah. Uh, it's very beautiful. And it's possible that if I use this, I may not need um, burnt sienna. So I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of my ultramarine and mix it in to see if I can get a lovely cool grey. Ha! Huh, I totally can. I don't think I'm going to need burnt sienna as well. That's very cool. So yeah, right, okay. I'm going to start with this um, big rock over here. I'm going to paint each of the rocks with uh, uh, some wa water in the center to, because a lot of them are curved like that. So I'm going to put a, a lighter side and then I'll be putting the color around the outer side. So I need a big batch of this transparent yellow oxide. Yep, yeah, here it is, transparent yellow oxide. So I'm going to squeeze some fresh paint out. It's going to make my job faster. Squeeze some of that. Oops, out. And I'm probably going to need more of the ultramarine as well. And I've run out of Holbein Ultramarine, so I'm using up this Schminky Ultramarine. It is beautiful. Uh, I'm not going to use much of the Thalo Blue, so that's going to be enough. I'm going to top up that green. That's my um, Viridian Green. Just so that it's ready in case I want to dip into that. I've got this fabulous carmine, alizarin carmine over here. Ready? There's um, a fair bit there. I'll just squeeze out a tiny bit more so that's ready. Right. 
and then I'm going to be putting down, I want to make up the grey that I was talking about a moment ago. I'm going to take a big blob of ultramarine and I'm going to use a separate brush to grab a big dob of transparent yellow oxide and then I'm going to mix them till I get a blue grey that I like that I think represents the this beautiful um, blue grey here and that was fast I might add the tiniest bit more blue right. oh it's got this fantastic texture on it this um particular stone okay I'm going to make a lovely puddle uh, I'm going to go to my other larger brush okay then I've got a puddle there with that one a lot of water I'm going to paint most of the rock and come in with uh, this beautiful warm do some lines that do some um, painting strokes that represent the curve of the rock and then put this grey over the top Oh, it's a bit dark. I need a lighter version of that one. Adding stack more water to my grey. And uh, I'm just going to go back and... So it's okay if it's really dark next to the other rock because that's going to end up dark. And again, I'm I'm going to put some strokes that suggest curvature of the stone. And there's a stroke, a couple more strokes there. And then I'm going to carefully paint the outside. I'm just going to break up that mess over there with a bit of colour, a bit of the warm. So I'm just going to watch it for a minute and then um, when I think it's half dry, I'm going to spritz it and see if I get a bit more texture into that one. Right, so that's that rock there. This one is a lighter version of that. That's this big one here. So I need... I'm going to do the same thing, lots of water down, and it's quite an uneven edge, so I might exaggerate that as I paint it, and it's got all these beautiful lines in it that come over like that, so I'm I'll just see if I can uh, put that in. Oh, there's a straight line over there. I'm not going too straight because I'm thinking about exaggerating the edge, exaggerating the curve of the pebble. My paint's running out, so I'm just continuing to paint there. And then there's this some um, little bits of soft grey that are sort of in between that and there's that one there and then I'm just going to get my water brush remove the excess moisture let's just see if I can move the color around It's a little bit too, um, this line here needs to actually be straighter 
It needs to be more like what it really is, which is a straight line. And there's a straight line there. It's they're not in grey. I'm just putting them in first in grey and then I'm going to enhance them with the beautiful warm. There's one there. That's better. And so it's a much lighter in tone, this one. Now this, going back to this one here, it is now partially dry, so I'm gonna spritz it, see if I can create some texture. It needs to be in that half dry state for that to work. I'm just watching it for a minute to see if, yep, it was too wet, so it, it hasn't had, um, the impact I was hoping for. This one is very wet so I'm not going to touch it. Um, so next is this one here. It's got the same colour set in it. So I'm going to paint this one next. There's water first and then put down these. It's got these um, stripes of warmth that go this way. Just put the edge in there. And there's a beautiful hint of warmth up there and on that edge. And on that edge, interestingly, and then I'm going to grab that grey and uh, there's a beautiful grey here. And there's a, just give it a little grey on the side there, there's a grey bit over there. just going to keep my eye on this one because I want to give it some more uh, texture. If I can't spray it at the right time, I'm, I'll go and get some salt. Okay, that's two lovely. Are there more of those particular ones? Um, right, I'm going to do this big one here now. It's got lots of that raw sienna kind of colour in it water all over it and then the beautiful little sienna underpainting Sienna, oops, went way outside the line there, doesn't matter. I'll correct that later. If I still feel it needs it. Right, so now I'm going to put in little bits of the, um, it's kind of dotty. Just putting it um, all over the There. There's definitely some strokes that do this. Just doing some more contour painting. And it comes in like that too. There. And there's a beautiful darker section there. And I'm just going to go around the outside and add some grey into the mix. Okay, that's good. Right, is, is it half dry? I'm just going back to this one. I'm going to spray it over there first where it's lovely and dark. It 
it's um, still too wet. It's not having the desired effect at all. Anyway, we've done this one, this one, this one. This one is really very yellow. There's almost no gray in that one, so I'll do that one next. Water, raw sienna, but it's kind of so got this little green tinge to it. So I'm going to put a green tinge into this one. Back to my raw sienna. I'll just complete painting that one. Um, what's that one? That's the grey. It's got this tiny bit of grey in there. And I'll give it a grey side. Just go back to that green. Bit there, bit there. Just going to push green into the grey. Let's just move it around a little bit. I'm going to take a pipette with water and um, see if I can push. That's This is what I wanted to do is make the paint push out. because it's got all these um, kind of roundish markings all over it. So I'm just going to see whether the pipette will create um, a mottly effect. I'm after a lovely mottly effect. Push some into the uh, dark bit there. It's just a wait and see um, over here. I'm just going to set that aside for now. Uh, right, are there any more that are in this colour set? This this one is totally raw sienna. Bit of water. And then I'm going to paint it raw sienna. Doesn't matter if I touch the other rocks. In fact, quite nice if they run into each other. Switch to um, water. And um, I'm just going to stick my brush into the little the grey and just add some little textural marks and make it grey on that side, grey on that side, grey down there. Okay, this one is really, really blue. So I'll give it some water first. And then um, start with the grey on the sides. Actually, that colour's pretty good. Grey on the sides. And um, I'm just going to use a small brush to use water. Move the paint around. And um, might see what Thalo Blue does if I drop it in. Oh, I love the, what Thalo Blue does chemically. It's fascinating. Maybe 
the model effect <laughs> is still not happening on this um, rock over here, so I'm going to do it with Thalo. That's pretty good. And that's the blue one. That's beautiful. This one is the palest gray blue. Put in a tiny bit of water. Tiny bit of gray on this one. And um, maybe a touch of green, just for the fun of it. I quite like the green I put into that one. Maybe I'll put a touch of green in that one. To and... I uh, need to move that, don't I? Okay, what about this one over? Oh, it's brown, this could be. I think I will paint it with no water. Just get this shape. One, then this one over here. Oh, almost tempted to leave it unpainted because it's so pretty. So I think I'll just do a stack of water and teensiest bit of blue, teensiest bit of that gray. that little one and let it run in and it's got a hint of that warm yeah. and then this one's grey water grey on this side, grey over there, grey over here, and I reckon there's a hint of pink in it. Not that much, I'll go better to that yellow browny colour. It's better. This is great because I'm starting to play with the um, red. So I think for the red one, I think I'll put down a layer on that bit of water. That's got a bit of that um, Yellow, warm yellow, yellow. And then I'm going to grab some of that red and push it. It's in this direction. The whole rock is this way. Just going to get some of that grey and put a stroke. Oh, it's just looking like blue now. 
to that. Pinky color. Um, and I think I will make those stripes a little more pronounced over the blue. Make that grey on the edge. Okay. I think I'll keep going. This one is incredibly pale. And a little bit of warmth, and then it's got a lot of that grey. And then it's got weird greeny tones in there, definitely. There, bits missing, that's good. Oh, this one's like granite over here, it's grey, quite dark. Choose my grey. This one, it's got grey. And then um, bits of, it's really burnt sienna, I really, it's definitely more of that red grey, so I'll drop teensy bits of red into that one. Just move them around with my warm yellow. Red and then the oxide on the sides. Bit and then a little bit of grey up here. Then, what's next? Oh, there's a blue one there. Paint it blue and then grab that grey and paint it grey. And this one here is light. Put the light on it. And dot red, green.
Okay. What next? Oh, this one has this shape on it. Goes like that. Like that. One more. It's got the tensiest bit of pink in there. And then I'm going to use little bits of grey in amongst that. Maybe a little white bits shining through. This one here, I'm doing a similar way, it goes like that. Like that and like that. It's kind of like doing contour painting. And then go over here. It's got grey in between the bits. Just put the rest full of water. Yeah. And this one has the hint of pink too. And then grey dots. Some lilies, I'll do one in grey. Leave a little bit of water. And then we've got these little ones, or oh, one is more sienna, and let's give it green. This one, that one, let's give it two. And this one, we give it a small amount of There, uh, not many more to go. And then I've got to paint the background. This is taking a long while. Oh, I'm going to have to give myself a break shortly. This one here I've invented. I can't make it the same as that. Oh, it'll, it'll look too matchy matchy. So. I'm going to start with water underneath and uh, give it round contour marks. Give it some green contour marks and some grey.
there. Oh, I think I'll do the same down there. That was just fun. Paint it on the grey and then dry brush. Nice quick way to get a tone down on it. And then I'll do the same with this one so it can be green. And neutralize that with the red. Finish with the water. And then over there, one of the uh, earthy ones, do a quickie earthy. Oh, that's how I'll get the texture on that one. Oh, and I've got a big one over here. Oh, it's very grey, rather flat. All right, take a second. Not that one, not that one there. As pale as could be. All right, I've done all my stones. I'm just going to put it on an angle so you can see what it's looking like so far, where we're going to put the background in. So, so far we've um, painted uh, the background, then masking fluid, then we've painted each of the rocks, and now we're up to putting in a lovely uh, dark background. And I'm going to do that by making up a darker mix of the grey that I've been using, and I'm going to drop in other colours uh, to that background as I go because there are some little tiny pebbles that I'm going to try and indicate as I go along. But to start, I'm going to put in an all over um, background using this grey here, but it's going to have more paint and no more water. So it will automatically go darker. Pick up more pure blue, more pure um, transparent yellow oxide. And I'm just going to check that it's dark. It is getting there. More paint again. The color is really good, but it, I need it to be even darker. <laughs> oh, it's getting lovely and sticky there. That beautiful paint. Right, is that, oh, there was a big lump there on the side of the brush. Just keep mixing till that's dissolved evenly. <laughs> that's beautiful, but I did like it a little more when it was on that less blue side, so I'm going to add more transparent oxide and lovely. So um, I'm going to start, I think I'll start down here and work my way inwards and I'm going to put in a little bit of water as I go so that I'll get a lovely variation in tone just automatically and then it'll hit the water and create a range of tones. I'm going to have to re-darken on the next layer. So I can be quite quick about this layer. Grab a bit more paint to go in amongst these rocks here. I 
I don't have to be as careful as I'm being, but the um, sections I've painted I quite like. So I quite like the idea that um, I'll maintain them as they are. Or water, so I can go out into this section here. Uh, just while it's wet and I've um, thought of it, I think I'll drop in a touch of um, some other colours. Got this viridian sitting here. So I think I'll just liven up the areas a bit with a bit of green. Maybe a little bit of red into that green. Maybe a little bit of blue into there too. Maybe some of the transparent oxide into that. Just trying to make it a little more interesting, that's all. So I've wet this area here. And I overdid it with my I'm taking my time with these shapes because they're quite satisfying so I think that makes it worthwhile maintaining what um, I've drawn Drop in these colours again just to make the background a little interesting. A bit of blue, probably going over the top with the uh, red. It just sort of dominates that colour. Okay, next section. I'll go up this way. Really making those pebbles pop, that's for sure. And this time I'm doing phthalo and I'll keep going up here.
to the colors again. Liking all that lovely wet and wet that's happening there. A little bit of, I'm varying the third colour. i putting more of the ultramarine up there. And there. I love working with shapes that are forgiving in this way that you it doesn't matter if you've kept to the original plan it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines I love that freedom to not be careful They're lovely and wet. Maybe the phthalo will have the biggest impact in those, right, because they're tiny. And I'll continue this way. Oh, it's still wet for me. That's lovely. Got a lovely big batch there, so it's going to make it all the way to the other side. brush over here just to kind of make this area a little different to the other areas I can always paint over it if it doesn't look like little rocks like I'm hoping
you switch to this little brush. Oh, I might just, uh, before doing that, drop in some other colour. Those wet bits while it's beautiful and wet. Go back to this central grey. some little bits white well not white the for the underpainting I think that's reading a little bit like it might be a batch of rocks and then I'm on the home, the home stretch a bit of water and back to this larger brush. same thing with dropping in the colour. I want it dark in that corner though. A bit more paint. Try and leave those little bits. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the beginning and see. I want to now um, Give the rocks a little bit more form. Oh, I can see it's very shiny, so I'll just turn it on the side. I need to give um, the rocks a bit of um, form. So that means that um, I could have done it as I was going along. But what I'm going to do instead is come back and add to each rock. Um, some a, a light glaze of my mixture here. Now what I'm going to do is move some of the mixture over here then add um, water to this mixture and what I've got here is a light Tone. I might make it a little bluer as in phthalo blue because it's a cooler blue well cooler than ultramarine it's really it's a pure blue and then each rock is going to get a bit of a side to it and this and um, this one for example goes along like this so that's its side. I'm going to make it less as I go over here. We'll see how that looks. That's convincing. Oh, nice opportunity for dry brush. Come back and finish it off with dry brush and I'll get texture. Oh, that's nice. I'm taking over some of the masking fluid with just my, the action of my brush. Uh -huh. Happy accident. And hopefully I'm giving that a little bit of form. Boy, do I need to wash that off. The masking fluid's dry though, so it's not going to attach to my brush. And then I need to do that on most of them. And I'm thinking mostly on the right hand side, will I give it more of a shadow? Just 
just going to use a, a flat brush to soften that out. And I've done that one, I'll do this one. Each side, but less on this side and more on that side. Just soften that out again. It's a dry brush that I'm softening it with. This one, I'll give it a bit of tone over here. It's The paper's quite damp, so and I don't mind if it causes some backgrounds in any direction. Uh, this one, I like that dark over there. Oh, I forgot to paint that corner. <laughs> uh, just go to this. Oh, I kept some of the dark mix. How marvellous. And just darken it a little. And back to my pale mix here. That's already got some, I did it at the time. A little bit on this edge. And soften it out with the dry brush. A little bit more over there, eh? Let's soften it out again. And then a tiny bit on this side. That one. This little one, every single rock is getting the same treatment. Oh, I've done that one. <laughs> right, it's very wet around that big one. I might go here first. That side and this side. Blend into the center. This one gets a little one and a big one across there. Little one, little one. Blend. I'm blending quite crudely because they've got a range of facets, faceted edges, so hopefully it'll look textural that's my hope anyway so i'm giving it an all over glaze and then i'm going to come back and add oh that's my important one i um, don't want to make it too dark too early Okay, how's that? Oh, I've got, I've missed a few. There's this one. And this one. I 
it make that darker, bigger, darker. I feel like I've missed. Oh, I think I might have missed that one. Too late to blend it out. Nope, look at that. Dry brush. That one's a bit straight, isn't it? Oh, no, I haven't done that one. Okay. Big corner on it. Just blend that out as I go. And this edge will have a little smaller one. And again, I'll blend before I move on. Small edge over here. Small, small. And then I shall blend. Shall I? I blend. Alrighty, just lift it up so it's less clear for you to see how it's building at the moment. I've um, lost this rock so I need to redefine it. I want to add more red to this rock here because I want it to be more of a focal point. But the amount of red I've got scattered and the amount of red here, I'm pretty satisfied with that. The edges of the rocks are starting to um, turn inward, uh, so that's working reasonably. And a um, little bit more to go. I need to darken the side of this one way more. I'm enjoying this um, darkening here. But it's probably time to let it completely dry and take off the masking fluid. And then I can do the final adjustments for darks. Oh, so close. All right. Thanks for tuning in to this part as well. This is wonderful. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'm at the final stages of this painting I've been doing of the pebbles. And what I wanted to experiment with was how to make it look like there's little pockets that are poking above the water and that the rest is below. So what I've been using uh, to make these white shapes here is a white watercolour pencil. This particular brand is uh, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura. Um, so what I've been doing is just drawing on some white watercolour and then what I'm going to do just leave that there in case you're interested in the brand <laughs> it's a bit shiny but never mind so then what I thought I would do is just take my flat brush and go around each of these um, drawn watercolour pencil drawn sectors and soften all the edges and then I'm going to do it to each of the little um, round shapes to soften off Just smoothing out the white. And this one as well. Just grabbing the white and pulling it out. So there's plenty of water on my brush to do. There's this one down here.
then I've got this big one up here as well. So I'm going to do that one. So I want everything within the, the circle to look crisp and crisper than everything else. And uh, it's definitely creating some lovely little focal points. So that's quite lovely on the painting. Just soften out a little bit more over here. Okay, so close to being um, finished. I think what I need to do is um, just give it a tiny little bit of um, accent around these little areas. And I'm going to do that with um, a little bit of colour. Um, so perhaps uh, some of the blue, I'm just going to go to my palette here. It's reasonably dry, the colours of my palette, so I'm just wetting them with my brush. I've got just this tiny bit of blue. And I'm going to give it like a little accent of colour. Or possibly it's a little tiny shadow. Just giving it this tiny little pop of colour. And um, I'll just use my flat brush again to just tiny bit of blending, tiny bit, tiny bit of blending there. And then I'm going to repeat that little bit of blue on each of the little circles, or they're not circles, they're little kind of random shapes. And I'm doing it on the inside. Tiny bit of blending again, tiny little bit. Tiny bit of water tiny bit of blue flat brush again back in. I blended a little too much there. And I might make this a little darker too. And uh, do the same over to this big one. Just there.
Um, right, I think that's about it. I'm just going to have a little look. Final, um, that's not too bad, these uh, marks sticking out. It looks a little bit like they're above the water. If I planned them from the beginning, I might have done it a little differently. I think what I will do is, um, if it's dry enough, is re-add a little accent of um, white. I've over-sharpened this <laughs> um, white pencil and I think it's about to fall out. Just re-add that accent there. It's a little bit damp, so it's not going to add as a bright white. So I need to make some of these others less distinct and leave these more distinct. So I think I'll put a soft wash over some of the rocks that are showing as having hard edges. I think that might help. I'm just going to mix up a lovely pale wash. of um, got that little bit of phthalo glue. There's a little bit of um, ultramarine glue, a little bit uh, over here of a bit more blue. I'm just gathering the blues basically and I think I'll add more water and then I've got this big um, lovely batch here of pale pale blue and I think I'll just knock back some of the sharp edges of the rocks that are um, distinct because if they're under the water they'd be less distinct. So I'm just going to do that especially around my highlight. So does that appear to be, yeah, I think that's helping a little bit. So I think I'll just do a little more. Um, maybe, oh, there was a highlight there. I think I just painted over it. This one as well. Oops, lots of water I just picked up then. Just giving this pale wash around the um, highlights. That no, they're not. They're sort of hot, like highlights. They're the poking out bits of the water. Just give this little wash to everything. I'm really just using up bits of paint on my palette now lovely green over here so I might use some of that next. I just want to push back any um, hard edges. I think that's working. a little better 
now their reading is just that little bit lighter. I think that's just that little bit better. I'm going to add a little, a little touch of green to this one here. And I reckon I'm just about to finish. That's just adding that little tiny suggestion that they are the rest are below the water. Just using green now. Nothing else. Uh, I'm going to say that I am done. I'm going to dry it. Um, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to show it to you on an angle so the reflections will be a little easier for you, you to see what it's like. I'm going to tip it on an angle because um, I put on so much extra glaze that uh, it's pooling just there. So I'll just tip it for a minute and um, when it's dry, I'll add a picture to the end of the video so you can see the final dry result. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video at all, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.